So I want to talk about really what our bodies emphasize and seem to, by physiology, deem important. And I think from that we can draw a few analogies uh, to the mental, emotional, psychological realm. Because we are holistic beings, after all. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, so where does the blood flow? This is a good question to ask when you're trying to figure out what the body thinks is important. Okay? 25% of blood leaving the heart, meaning cardiac output, heads, beeline, straight for the brain. Some of you are going, no shit, your luck. That's important. Okay, right. Um, but many of you don't recognize a second place that gets about the same amount of blood flow. Actually, if you think about ratio-wise in terms of size, it perhaps gets more blood flow. 25% of blood leaving the heart also goes south to your kidneys. Your kidneys get 25% of blood flow at any given point in time, assuming that you're not in a pathological state. And, in fact, um, this we can take measurements based on how much your kidneys are processing blood because the average human being has approximately five to six liters of blood in them and if you look at the processing rate of the kidneys how much blood goes through the kidneys in a given 24 hour cycle it is about 180 liters do you see something here guys your blood gets filtered by the kidneys 60 times a day, meaning a 24-hour day. 60! Holy Toledo, Batman. I think the kidneys might be important. Right? Filtering. You're filtering. You're cleaning the blood. There's stuff going out into the urine to be excreted. And... A lot of it you're pulling back because you don't want to lose all the stuff you need. But through this, you're regulating all sorts of systems in the body. Your, your pH, meaning how acidic or basic your blood is, which is very narrowly regulated, in fact. And, you know, your blood pressure, all these things. Your kidneys actually secrete hormones um, that really have a lot to do with how diluted the urine is. And also, if you turn on red blood cell production, because it's tied to the blood. So, pretty important job. But the, the big thing is they filter stuff in the body. Like I said, to the tune of 60 times in a 24-hour cycle. That's a lot, folks. In the same way, I think we perhaps need to put greater emphasis in our mental, psychological, emotional lives on... Filtration. How do we filter things in our world? Meaning in, in who we are, in our being. Have you ever asked yourself that question? I think it's a valid question to ask. Who do I allow to influence me on that core level? You know, who goes in the core? And obviously in my, my, my diagram of how my filtration system works would be, you know, there are certain people and even books. <laughs> of course, Jen has books at the core. And, and, and pieces of education and other things that kind of belong at this core, like things I really value that I filter things through. And then that core, you know, expands out. And there are people that influence me a little bit out here where I, I'll hear what they say. And then further out, right? And I'm learning to, as I grow and develop as a human being, to consciously think about where thing, people go in this expanding and contracting filtration system. Based upon, I mean, my experience is another core, uh, another piece of the filtration system. And part of our job, I think, in life is to orient ourselves towards our experience such that we can utilize it as a good filtration device. You know, one of the problems that I see for people is that they don't recognize how experience 
acts like a filter, right? This is the problem with trauma, you know? With trauma, we have this filtration system that is influencing, you know, indeed, if you were having flashbacks, um, it's definitely influencing the spectrum and how you interact in the world and how things get filtered. And yet some of the time we're not dealing with our flashbacks. We're not processing. We're not sorting out how to be oriented to that. And this is, you know, this is dangerous because you basically have a filter that's not filtered. You're not understanding the filter itself or where it goes or how to manage where it goes. This is also one of the most damaging things about uh, toxic relationships is that if you're hooked up with the wrong type, meaning not just someone who has poor advice or doesn't lacks wisdom, but rather you're hooked up with someone, you know, a toxic personality that's say a narcissist. I think part of the the issue with narcissists is that they pathologize the filtration system itself, right? What do I mean by this? I mean, one of the tactics of, say, a narcissist would be gaslighting, this abusive tactic to influence somebody's um, perspective and orientation towards the world, towards how they filter things, towards reality. and. In so doing, they manipulate it, but the problem is the person who's experiencing the gaslighting doesn't know that that's the filter things are being poured through and thus can't, can't move very readily where this filter goes. So, for example, I mean, what happens in, in, in our relationships with significant others is that we tend to put them in our core filtration um, area for lack of a better way to describe it. Um, that was not some <laughs> euphemism, guys, in case you were wondering. <laughs> or, no. Anyways, um, the, but we put them in, in our core concentric circle of influence, and the problem is they're filtering information and ideas and things and what's happening through a skewed reality. In fact, it's a fake reality. It's a delusional world. It's a lie. And so, and if you, you're not aware of this, if you're a victim, I mean, you're not assuming um, this person is literally messing with your reality. That's not the first thought that comes to mind. You assume they have your best interest at heart or, you know, close to it. And so you're not aware that they're, in fact, skewing the, the filter itself. And that's a problem. That's part of the reason why healing from um, a toxic relationship is so difficult, because these rippling effects of uh, your filtration system have to be reassessed and fixed. You have to move the narcissist out. You have to e eject them from the nucleus. And that is uh, not an easy, easily done thing. So all that to say, um, I think we should be asking ourselves, what influencers, what filters are we utilizing? And how can we improve our filtration systems? How is it, you know, that we can filter better or more efficiently? or move people that maybe belong in our inner circle into the inner circle and people that don't belong there out and, and changing, changing up the system so that it, it functions um, as, it, as, as it was meant to function. So thanks for tuning in. Um, I think the body's amazing. Let me know if you, what or who, your filters are on your reality. You know, what books have you read that you often find yourself thinking in terms of, you know, what would this author think about this idea? Uh, post it in the comments below. I'd love to hear that. I love book lists, in case you were wondering. And um, thanks for tuning in. Adios.